All right. Will Blaschek, let's start with you, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Will Martin. Hello, Christian. How are you? Good, thank you. You, Will? I'm well. Um, is there anybody that you had Saturday that will not be available Wednesday? No, no. I think uh, we actually get back uh, Enzo for this game. So now all the players that they were available uh, on Saturday, we will be available for this game. That's that's good to hear. Um, in terms of Enzo, is it a situation where he works back in right away or starts off the bench? I know that you probably want to keep a little bit of that close to the vest, but I guess what kind of uh, shape is he in in terms of uh, being able to get what what he, what can he give? I guess. I think he's uh, coming back into the team. He's coming back in the squad, and so like everybody, I think that there is uh, there is um, uh, you know. He needs to have time because he didn't play for a few weeks. And so he needs to ease up into the team, like happened already with uh, with vast majority of the players when they come back from long from long uh, term injuries or medium. It wasn't very, very long, but it was still a few weeks away. So he he's trained with the first team now. Regularly, he's training with the squad, but he still needs uh, a bit of time to get back to sharpness of where, what you have when you play on a weekly basis. What tactically went into putting Brecht as a winger? And it seemed also that he was playing a lot more inverted than you've had your wingers play uh, in the past. What what kind of went into that decision and almost kind of the tactical shift that you guys went towards uh, in the game on Saturday? Yeah, my thoughts is that uh, I want uh, our attacking players to be more or less the same in the sense everybody with their own characteristics, but they all have to be playmakers and they all have to be dynamic. So I don't think the way football is going that uh, you pigeonhole players that you can only be a winger. Then obviously there are specialists in certain positions like for example the goalkeeper but uh, but uh, I think that Brecht is a player like Ben for example that can play inside can play outside and uh, can do a good job in uh, in those positions that uh, and they have some different uh, duties when we are um, attacking, but uh, what I like in that position is to have technical players that they are dynamic and can make the play or can run or can, you know, play combination football. And I think that Brecht can adapt to play inside and outside. One of the characteristics I liked about him when we were scouting him, it was this ability to be playing in a couple of positions. Uh, lastly, for me, it, it does seem like that your midfielders have gained uh, quite a lot of freedom in terms of the way that they are operating. Uh, you got a lot of different guys who will either go forward or set back and things of that nature. Uh, how much have you kind of worked on uh, giving them the trust that, that they understand, you know, who needs to press high, who needs to to sit back and, and, and make it almost kind of like a uh, – it looked very much kind of like total football a little bit from a, from a pressing and sitting perspective. I think that uh, will that what I said on many occasions in the past, and I know that uh, people want uh, things happen then and then. It takes a little bit of time, and it takes for the boys to understand exactly the principle that we want to play as the ball is moving and as the opposition is uh, denying certain spaces and conceding others. So. I think that the boys are understanding more and more with the work that I do with the coaching staff in the week. And we do a lot of videos, we do a lot of work on the pitch. And um, I think that uh, they will become more and more familiar with this concept as the game goes on, hopefully with the ball and without the ball. So I was very pleased with the way they played because I thought that LAFC, I said many times, is one of the best team, if not the best team in this league. Not only because they're the champions, but because <clears throat> when I saw them playing and scouting them, I was very impressed with the way they played and with the individual quality that they have.
Thank you, Christian. Good luck on set uh, on Wednesday, I should say. Good luck Thank on you. Wednesday and Saturday, both. Thank you. Okay, Carol Walton. Hey, Christian, how are you? Hey, Carol. Thank you. I'm fine. You? I am good. Um, I saw uh, <clears throat> Guzman Carujo was not on the roster Saturday, and I don't think he's hurt. Is he? I just wonder what's going on there. A uh, nothing. It's just a, a technical choice with a tactical choice that. Uh, I have to make when you have uh, the full roster and uh, Guzman, everybody for me is important. I know that this sounds as a cliche. And uh, if you are one player that is out of the squad, you don't think that uh, the coach means that, but I do. I think that the, every player is important, but I need to look at uh, how everybody's training and I have to make certain considerations. Mm, and I thought that the 20th that I selected for the game against LAFC were the one, in my opinion, that at that time, for that game, gave us the best chance to win the game. Then, obviously, uh, I can be wrong, of course, and uh, the time, you know, will tell. And uh, likely for us, it was a good game. And uh, But uh, also, Bill was out of the squad. Um, for the same reason, and I don't have obviously anything against them. At, uh, on the contrary, I think that they are guys that they train well. They are conscientious. They, but they also the guys that are selected. They do the same, and there is real competition in this squad. And uh, and so I have to make choices. Uh, these are the worst part of the job by far. When you have to tell a player that has been training hard, that has been working. Uh, well, that uh, is not part of the 20th. And uh, if there is one moment of my job that I would like to change is that, but it's part of the job and I need to make those decisions and I have to make them before. So then after uh, everybody's wise after the event, but I have to make those decision before, but uh, uh, I know is uh, it's an unwelcome part of the job but it is still part of the job. And the, the job of the players that they don't get selected is to give the best and to make the job difficult for me when this occasion will uh, rise again. Not that they are doing anything wrong, but uh, there are also other players that they are working hard and well. Speaking of those players working hard and well, to see Andrew Privet stay in the lineup six, seven games now, mm -hmm. I know you're not going to say you're surprised by his talent, but to see what he's done in this setting, um, how, you know, what's, what's working for him? Well, I think Andrew is justifying his selection. He's playing with calm. Uh, he's, uh, he's a good passer of the ball. Uh, he can, uh, he's improving as a defender, even though uh, there are still moments in the game that he needs to improve. But again, you, you just said it is the seventh uh, start in the pro. So he's quite young in that respect. But I like the way he is on the pitch. He's calm, he's composed. He's, uh, he gives us something when we are in possession. And uh, I think that there are margin of uh, growth in him as well. Okay. And um, I know you kind of referenced this, the last press conference about the international window, you know, and the, the uncertainty there. Are you on the phone with Zoran this week begging him not to do anything? You know, or... the, the, beauty, the beauty of being in the new training ground that I don't need to be on the phone. I can see him every day. There you go. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if he's if he's great for for either one of us, but uh, no, he's uh, jogging apart. Uh, I don't get too much into that. I'm happy with the squad as it is. So if there are. Uh, great uh, possibilities for us or for the boys uh, we will need as a club you always need to listen if there are great offers but uh, i told him that i'm happy with the squad as it is and you know i don't need uh, uh, to do anything at the moment uh, i believe that you know they know what i am looking for they know what i want ultimately to get our team to improve but the, the transfer market is closed here apart from for us to bring players in, apart from free agents, and the players can only go out. So uh, I am not seeking 
anything. I am happy to stay with the boys that I have here. They work well. There is a good atmosphere. And uh, for me, I'm happy to stay as we are. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last hand up is Caleb Adams. So we'll finish the press conference there. Hey, Christian. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Caleb. Uh, just one question for me. Um, one of the hardest things in football to do is to maintain a high level of play consistently week in and week out. What's the key for, for Charlotte, for your team, to continue that high level of play we saw against LAFC throughout these last 10 games? Yeah, this is uh, it, it is the ultimate challenge is that is to be able to is to be able to first of all to create a standard that is uh, high. And then after that has to become the reference. So you don't want to be far away from that to try to be as consistent as possible. Uh, in order to do that, we have to be very clear about the way we want to play. So to have certain certainty on uh, or in references when we play with the ball and without the ball, to have intensity in training. And I think we are working towards that. Uh, all the players seem engaged. They hopefully they understand the role and the position that I designed for all of them, because even the players that do not start, they still have a role to play for the squad. A very important one as well, as we saw when Scott came, he became he was the one that scored the winner. So uh, I said to them many times that the players that they don't start, they could even be the most important as the game goes on because they are the one that they have to change the game. So I will never accept players that they don't give uh, the maximum or they put their head down because they don't start. They can have that kind of disappointment. I understand that. But they have to channel it in performance. Otherwise, they pull themselves out. Because those plays that they don't start become vital as the game goes on. They become the, the ones that they need to change the game uh, to to finish the game off, so to speak. So they are vital. So that, that's why uh, everybody's important. Also, uh, you know, following what uh, Carol was asking, also Guzman, also Bill, also the players that they were out of the squad, you know, football in, uh, things in football can change very, very rapidly, very quickly. And so in a moment where you were not starting or not in the squad, you can become a vital part. So it's very, very important how they keep working on a daily basis. I understand it might be difficult psychologically, but this is part of our work. Uh, there are... Uh, those moments that they actually make uh, the character, make you relentless, make you having, uh, you know, that kind of resilience that is key in life, not just in football. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for your time. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.